गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू ऑल फोर्स ई लर्निंग क्लासेस दिस इज जोलॉजी सब्जेक्ट चैप्टर एक्सक्रेडिट प्रोडक्ट्स एंड देयर एलिमिनेशन सेशन नंबर 14 नाउ विल डिस्कस द फंक्शंस ऑफ द किडनीज एज वेल एज रोल ऑफ अदर ऑर्गन्स इन एक्सक्रीशन सो अर्लियर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द मिक्स यूरेशन एंड यूरिन नाउ इट इज अ द सो व्हेन वी डिस्कस्ड द मिक्स यूरेशन द यूरिन that is uh, the process of eliminating the urine to the outside and urine composition let's see what are the functions of the kidneys the functions include are osmoregulation 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 in the sense uh, the maintenance of the body fluids and salts in the body by removing uh, the excess of water the generally the unnecessary unnecessary substances are being eliminated outside and uh, water which is uh, however large amount of the water 99 percentage is absorbed the remaining is sent out thereby it maintains the balance of the fluids and salts which is osmoregulation next the excretion of excretion of nitrogenous waste nitrogenous waste nitrogenous waste are harmful for the body nitrogenous waste are harmful for the body the nitrogenous waste in the sense the urea uric acid are what eliminated outside next the elimination of elimination of excess of the salts elimination of excess of uh, the salts the excess of the salts that are present are also being eliminated thereby it maintains the salts balance next it also responsible for maintenance of the ph maintenance of uh, maintenance of uh, the ph of the blood ph of uh, the blood we have discussed that uh, the main role of tubular secretion tubular secretion where hydrogen ions ammonia potassium are released uh, secreted from a peritubular capillary net into the dct right and also pct as well as even some extent into the cd so this release of hydrogen ions the pH of uh, the blood is a uh, hydrogen ion concentration in the sense the pH itself as the hydrogen ions from the blood uh, are released uh, into the secreted into the tubule that is tubular secretion thereby it maintains the hydrogen ion concentration that is nothing but the pH of the blood next apart from that the secretion of secretion of renin secretion of renin is uh, also we see what do you mean by renin r e n i n mind you earlier we earlier also we discussed uh, r e n n i n is there or e n i n is there when glomerular filtration rate or blood pressure which is low so affecting the glomerular filtration under that condition such a condition is detected by the macular densa renin uh, is secreted from the peptic cells of uh, the stomach r e n n i n whereas renin is uh, r e n n i n from peptic cells of uh, the stomach uh, will see in the case of uh, r e n n i n is that or e n i n secreted from j g cells this is uh, the point to recall and uh, renin uh, is r e n n i n is a uh, water released in a inactive form inactive form inactive form that is none other than pro renin pro renin whereas the renin is r e anion is secreted in a active form itself active form next apart from that r e n n i n 
acts on casein protein casein so it is involving the protein digestion next r e n i n is responsible for the increasing of uh, the glomerular filtration glomerular filtration is uh, normalized glomerular filtration is filtration is a uh, normalized uh, by means of uh, the r e n i n next apart from that the these are the main reasons uh, differences we find between r e n n i n and r e n i n this is the most important point to recall next uh, next we'll move on to the other organs that are involved in uh, the excretion other organs that is the so far we have discussed uh, the role played by the kidneys kidneys how they play role now besides the kidneys uh, the lungs uh, lungs next the skin and uh, the liver or water uh, also playing vital role in a uh, the excretion in excretion process uh, lung skin and the liver also play role that's what the role of other organs in excretion in this connection first of all we'll go for the lungs uh, description lungs are we know very well lungs are considered to be the respiratory organs but they are also playing role in a uh, excretion in what way generally lungs have a capacity of about uh, 200 ml of 200 ml of uh, the co2 is eliminated per minute per minute it is it is about i am saying about uh, 200 ml of co2 is eliminated by lungs per minute so you can calculate per the one hour it will be into 60 minutes is it right so around us 12000 milliliters in the sense uh, it is a uh, 12 liters so it is said that in uh, if you observe that in the information of the textbooks you will find 18 liters approximately so 12 to 18 liters of uh, the what is called uh, co2 is excreted uh, through the lungs for uh, one hour one hour it is and apart from that there are uh, the lungs through which uh, the water is also eliminated about so per uh, one hour 18 liters of co2 and per uh, day per one day about uh, 400 ml of uh, the water is also excreted out through the lungs yes that we find generally these are all what the end products of the metabolism that is none other than the acid oxidation of the food substance when oxygen is inhaled it reaches into the tissues where the stored food is oxidized and liberates the co2 and water this water is uh, eliminated outside in the form of vapor so lungs eliminating the end products of the metabolism that is none other than the carbon dioxide and water per uh, one hour see carefully it is one hour this is one day per one hour 18 liters of co2 how we get this information as per in crt text uh, it is given 200 ml of co2 per a minute so it will be per an hour approximately it is 12000 milliliters in the sensor uh, 12 liters so at an extent of 18 liters per one hour the co2 is sent out and also per one day 4 400 ml of the water is uh, sent out and this uh, sending out of water through lungs uh, depends on the climatic conditions also that is 
in a dry condition large amount whereas in hot humid condition less amount is uh, sent out and uh, apart from that the lungs uh, or uh, the respiratory organs besides that they are sending out the co2 and h2o besides that certain volatile substances what does it mean by volatile evaporated certain volatile substances are also sent out via the lungs this is how lungs are playing white role in uh, the acting as accessory excretory other excretory organs that is lungs besides being a uh, respiration it is the role per minute uh, 200 ml of co2 so per hour it is approximately it is a uh, approximately maximum 18 liters 200 into 60 will be 12,000 milliliters so it is a uh, 12 liters and a maximum of uh, 18 liters per one hour CO2 and per day 400 ml of the water is also sent out. Exhaling air is with more water. That's how the we see the end products in the metabolism oxidation of food substances CO2 and water are sent out. This is how the lungs are acting as other excretory organs. Next we will move on to skin. The skin is a Mammalian skin is characterized by means of presence of uh, the sudoriferous glands. Sudoriferous, uh, sudoriferous glands and uh, the what is called uh, sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands. What we learn? Mammals are with uh, characterized characteristic feature of uh, the what is called uh, integumentary glands that is none other than the sudoriferous glands uh, as well as the uh, sebaceous glands sudoriferous glands are also named to be the sweat glands also considered to be the sweat glands sudoriferous glands are also said to be the sweat glands and uh, sebaceous glands these are the characteristic feature of mammals and that is also human beings Pseudoriferous glands, sweat, generally sweat eliminates the watery fluid, it is a watery fluid, in fact the pseudoriferous glands excrete sweat, sweat is a watery fluid, watery fluid, it includes 95% as water itself. That's what it is a watery fluid. And through this, uh, the sodium chloride as well as uh, the urea and uh, the lactic acid is uh, eliminated outside the lactic acid. Lactic acid, not the uric acid. Remind you, through sweat, uh, the it is a sweat is an excretion of the sudoriferous glands present in the skin and uh, it is a watery fluid large extent the water is present that's what it is a watery fluid through that sodium chloride urea lactic acid is uh, eliminated outside generally the sudoriferous glands sweat glands are primarily of thermal regulation in uh, nature which means uh, the Cooling effect at the surface level of the body is done by means of the pseudoriferous glands. When it is profusely sweat, when uh, the air exposed to the skin, uh, one uh, feel it is the cooling effect. So, the sweat is of uh, providing uh, the cooling effect uh, of the surface of the skin. Generally, it is an adaptation. Sweat is a, what is called a sending out. It is a, the cooling effect on the body. Right? So, this is how the sweat eliminating sodium chloride, urea and the lactic acid. Next, uh, the sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands in the sense uh, sebaceous glands are secreting the sebum sebum it is a uh, an oily fluid it is an oily fluid 
so sebaceous glands are what are secreting the these are also present on the skin the sebum is an oily fluid which is uh, sending out uh, the waxes that is wax sterol and uh, hydrocarbons uh, as well as the hydrocarbons are eliminated hydrocarbons are uh, eliminated from uh, the sebum an oily fluid the sebaceous glands are nothing but the secreting the sebum sebum is an oily fluid which includes wax wax in the sense the nothing but the lipids wax sterol hydrocarbons are eliminated so in this connection we can also see the differences between uh, the sweat that is sweat glands and also with that of the sebum let's see the description related to this that is sweat is secreted from uh, the sudoriferous glands sudoriferous sudoriferous uh, glands whereas uh, the sebum is a uh, secreted by sebaceous glands sebaceous uh, glands right next the point to remember is sweat is uh, stimulated by the body temperature normal conditions you do not sweat so it is influenced by the temperature it is a uh, sweat secretion is uh, stimulated by or influenced by the temperature or body heat temperature or body heat whereas the case with the sebum is a uh, continuously secreted continuously secreted and uh, the point to remember through sweat glands the sweat secreted which sends out sodium chloride and urea lactic acid is lactic acid is excreted out whereas through sebum through sebum the wax next sterol hydrocarbons are hydrocarbons are uh, secreted sweat is uh, secreted at the skin surface at the skin surface right however both are so you may raise a doubt both are present on the skin so it is uh, secreted at the skin surface how about the sebum sebum is secreted at uh, the what is called follicle of the hair at uh, the follicle of hair it is a uh, secreted and sweat is for the excretion of the sodium chloride urea lactic acid however the sebum is uh, excreting the wax sterol hydrocarbons it lubricates it makes the oily skin and protect as well as the lubrication is the function of the sebum so these are the points to remember so related to a topic uh, dis description related to a topic uh, entire description learning is very very important the case with the medical examinations most of the questions are however it involve the memory based but there are certain times you must be very careful that is the description related to a topic you have to learn in a comprehensive manner it is not that simply learn uh, that sebaceous glands are uh, the secreting the sebum it is uh, secreting the wax sterol and uh, hydrocarbons the concept is important that is here what that we learn that is through skin uh, the sweat is removed uh, which is a watery fluid but uh, the sebum is oily and it is a uh, it's a secretion from the sudoriferous glands uh, stimulated by the body temperature whereas sebaceous gland secreting the sebum is 
continuous it is not uh, required any stimulus or uh, body temperature and uh, sweat eliminates the sodium chloride urea and lactic acid whereas wax sterol and hydrocarbons and the sweat uh, is uh, released at the skin surface whereas however uh, the sebum is also released at the surface of the skin but at the root uh, that is at the follicle of the hair this is how one gets the oily nature of the skin and it is also for protection lubrication this is uh, the prime differences between uh, the sweat and the sebum let's move on to the next one is it to be the liver liver is considered to be the largest uh, exocrine gland we have discussed liver is the hemopoietic and erythroclastic also we discussed how generally we discussed that uh, the liver remove the products such as bile pigments liver is a largest exocrine gland through liver the steroids cholesterol cholesterol next uh, the degraded uh, steroid degraded uh, steroid hormones steroid hormones next uh, certain drugs uh, vitamins vitamins are uh, removed from uh, and also bile pigments bile pigments are uh, removed from uh, the liver i repeat look at here we have discussed that liver is the worn out rbcs in the sense the every that is rbcs have a lifespan of 120 days so after 120 days the rbcs are uh, destroyed rbc contain hemoglobin hemoglobin na uh, is uh, also degraded to form the bile pigments we have discussed what why the urine is with the yellow color it is because of the degraded uh, the degradation of the bile pigments uh, hemoglobin when it is uh, degraded results in the formation of bile pigments which is forming the urochrome urochrome what is sent out through the urine and it is what giving color light yellow the same way the degradation of hemoglobin results in the bile pigments these bile pigments are sent out uh, from liver into the from liver the common hepatic duct join with the cystic duct and form common bile duct common bile duct uh, combined with that of the hepatic uh, the uh, hepatic duct combined with the pancreatic duct and results in the formation of hepato pancreatic duct the hepato pancreatic duct releasing the secretions into the duodenum and uh, so that is duodenum is the part of the alimentary canal so this is how from small intestine large intestine through anus uh, the bile is sent out besides that degraded steroid hormones cholesterol drugs certain vitamins which are excessively there vitamins are useful for the for the body right and uh, we discussed that these are all excessive that's how the unnecessary are sent out which may be toxic to the body that's the reason why liver is a detoxifying organ so this is how cholesterol degraded steroid hormones drugs vitamins and bile pigments called bile rubin and bile vardin is uh, sent out of the liver so this is how the other uh, the role of the other excretory organs there we discussed the lung skin and the liver and even not so here you must keep in mind uh, each and every point that is of the lungs skin and uh, liver this is how what uh, the products are eliminated uh, 
can be discussed that is through liver cholesterol degraded steroid hormones drugs vitamins by pigments through skin uh, the via the sudoriferous glands sodium chloride urea lactic acid whereas sebaceous glands uh, wax sterol and uh, hydrocarbons and uh, via the lungs co2 and water that is per hour 18 liters of uh, the co2 per hour whereas uh, water per day 400 milliliter and uh, we have stressed that uh, sweat glands by removal of the sweat uh, besides excreting uh, the sodium chloride urea lactic acid it is also showing primarily the thermoregulation that is none other than by cooling effect on the surface of the skin this is what we discuss and even uh, certain amount of the nitrogenous waste are also excreted by the salivary glands which secretes the saliva this is also the point to remember that is salivary gland secretes the saliva through saliva nitrogenous waste are also being eliminated nitrogenous waste are also being removed from the saliva so this is how the role of the other organs are role of the other organs in excretion is discussed next uh, we move on to the disorders related to the excretory system and uh, the point uh, you have to remember that uh, there are certain uh, conditions urine uh, we have discussed through urine there are uh, the certain condition the body necessary one are also being eliminated which can be urine with uh, the composition 96 percentage of water 2 percent urea and 2 percent others but there are certain uh, microbial infections or else uh, the diabetic conditions we can see certain conditions which is if uh, the infection by a helminthic parasite which damages the blood vessels uh, related to the urinary bladder so blood loss takes place through the urine which is said to be the hematuria and there are certain conditions the uh, albumin serum albumin serum globulins are seen serum albumin is also sent out which is uh, the albuminuria hemoglobin is also sent out which is a uh, hemoglobinuria next uh, there are certain conditions where uh, the blood loss hematuria and normally glucose is not uh, seen in the urine but as a indicative of the diabetes mellitus glycosuria Access of glucose uh, is lost through the glucose through urine, which is glycosuria. Ketone bodies, ketonuria, glycosuria, ketonuria are the indicatives of the diabetes mellitus. And even uh, the there are certain conditions where uh, the WBCs are WBCs are also eliminated through urine, which is named to be the pyuria. Thank you.